noi siamo il giro in mezzo. Just know him as the brother, brother George Faber Those are the names, right? Then I know you. 
Hallelujah. If I come to him, can I have a face mask? And I take this face mask away, right? I've taken something that belongs to him. He's no longer happy. <coughs> so restoration is me returning this thing back to the owner. Hallelujah. And he puts it where it's supposed to be. Amen. Someone's still not talking. Amen. 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 Now, we have a thing as a fellowship this year. We're talking about restoring souls. <coughs> so are we saying that souls have been lost somewhere and they need to be taken back and put back in the boat? No. But there's certainly a restoration that is taking place. That's the type of restoration that we are going to learn about in just a few minutes. Amen. Now, in the book of Genesis, chapter <coughs> number 4, go oh, 2 verse 7 actually. We are told that when God formed man out of the dust, once upon a time man was just a statue. He was just directed. I don't know if God used clay or long soil, but whatever he used, he was just a statue, a mixture of sand and water. But what made you have this body that you have, this flesh, nice looking body of yours, is when we the next the verse tells us to say that God breathed in man the breath of life. Hallelujah. And after man received that breath of life, the word of God tells us that man became a living soul. Now, notice one thing there. The Bible did not say God created the soul and put it in man. No. God only breathed in the body that he had created, and man became a living soul. So the soul was as a result of the breath that God had put in man and the body interacting, then the soul was produced. Amen. 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 Now, you where you are sitting right there, I'm only able to see one part of you and that is your body. The other two parts are not seeing you. That is your soul and your spirit. Where is the spirit coming from? The same breath that God breathed in man. That is a spirit that is inside you. That is the real you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'll be emphasizing that too. We are all responding because you already know these things. I'm just reminding you. The spirit that God gave you the breath was when you look at the interpretation of the word spirit, when you really look at it from the roots, it just means wind. Hallelujah. So the same breath that God breathed in you, that's the spirit that's inside you. Now, when that spirit interacted with the body that God had formed, a soul was produced. And the Bible says, and man became a living soul, just after the breath of God had entered him. Amen. Amen. Now, how can we differentiate this thing? Because right now, when we say, angels, you're only able to see this, this body. You're not seeing my soul. You're not seeing my spirit. Unless I know some of you are glad good eyes and spirit, you can see that. But for normal cases, I suppose the only thing that comes to mind is this body right here. When we read in the book of Hebrews chapter number 4, verse 12, we are told that the word of God is sharper than any sword you can think of. It can divide the soul and the spirit and joints and marrow. Where do you find joints and marrow? That's the body. So the word can put a distinction between your spirit your soul and your body, it can divide this spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel like we can try it today. We'll get one person here and use the word of God and divide you. We'll put your soul in and also put your spirit in and your body will remain there. Who can volunteer? No one is willing. Hallelujah. No one is willing to volunteer because. Like I already told you, you already know these things. You know that the moment your spirit is no longer in your body, you are dead. Go go and bury you. Man stops talking, man stops thinking, man stops living to smart when the spirit is out of the body. Yes, that. But it, does the soul remain in the body? No. The soul goes with the spirit. Jesus Christ said, what is the profit of gaining the entire world but lose your own soul? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until we are all agreeing, I won't stop saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
for science, is that part of you that tells you that mm -mm, if you reach that, it is wrong. Even if no one ever told you that that is wrong. You just know from deep down inside you. Nobody ever told Joseph that adultery is a sin. The law was not given at that time. But still when Potiphar's wife offered herself to him, he ran away. Because deep down in the inside of you, God has already given you a conscience that tells you that this is wrong, this is right. Hallelujah. Inside the spirit again, you find the intuition. The intuition is the part of your spirit which is responsible to hear from God. Everything that God will say, it's your intuition that hears it. You also find another part called the communion. The communion part of you is the part responsible for talking to God. Prayer, worship, everything is He. Hallelujah. You come to Mr. So. He's a very important player when it comes to man or woman. Because anything that this guy does, the spirit, the one who is hearing from God, the one that works with God, if he does not transfer it to this guy, and this guy does not tell the body what to do, it will just stay there and it will be as if nothing has happened. Hallelujah. <coughs> so the soul, you find three things in the soul as well. You find the will, the emotions, and the mind. Hallelujah. The will, you are free to do anything. You can right now, you can walk out of the service. Or you can stay here. You are free will. God doesn't force you to do anything. Because your soul was as a result of your spirit entering your body. It's an independent entity, so to say. Your soul became, your soul was not created. So all the decision making takes place here. The mind is here. The emotions are here. What else? The will. The will. Amen. You can clap for us. It's delicious. Even the clapping is full of jealousy. Come on, let's clap for us. So, the spirit having the communion, the intuition, and the concise. Okay, we are following. The soul having the mind, the will, and the what? Wow. Then let me come to the body. The body has a brain and it has this physical structure as well. Hallelujah. Even if you go to science and ask them, what is the difference between the brain and the mind, they are still having to reach a conclusion up to now. Debates are still going there. Because they cannot locate the mind anywhere on this body. The mind is found in the soul. Here there's only a, a two or five pound brain that cold material you have inside you. It's disgusting, to be honest. It doesn't look good. How many like the picture of the brain? Me, I don't. <laughs> That's nice. At least somebody likes the picture. So that coil thing, that's the thing you are here for at school to train. Everything they are teaching you, you are taking it to your brain. That's your body. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, this guy here, they even finished now. This body was made from the ground, right? So his number one commitment before anything else is what is found on earth because his very material comes from earth. This guy here is a combination of the two the earthly material and the spiritual material. So this guy is undecided. No wonder he has free will. If he decides that no, I'll be more focused on the earth, then that's it. Or if he decides that I'll be more focused on the spirit, then that's it, because it's a combination of the two. But this guy here, the spirit, is not a combination of anything. He's just one, one material. He came originally from God. And he was put in God. So everything that God will say, Everything that God will reveal, it's this guy to catch it. Your body will never hear God talking. Your soul will never hear God speaking. It is your spirit that does that. If you are to move your spirit and just see you with your soul in your body, and you bring a child there and say, kill him, you will kill the child without hesitation. Because these two have no conscience. There's nothing that tells them that what you are doing is wrong. That information comes from the spirit. Hallelujah. 
Now, everything that we do in Christianity is all for this guy here. And if this guy is shaped nicely, we want this guy to help us to bring the information he said. Hallelujah. So if God says, Brother Maxwell, go to church, tell me that go to church. You tell me that go to church. And he goes to church. Hallelujah. But if these three are not united, there will be a problem. God will speak, Brother Maxwell, go to church. Say, go to church. No. You keep quiet. Will he go to church? No. It's as if he never even heard God speaking in the first place. So the problem is not that God does not speak to you. Trust me, God speaks to you 24-7. In the 24-7 is even a little bit of an exaggeration. The call about where I share 24-7 is why I wake up. Maybe 9900. He speaks to you every moment. He lives right now. You just tune into your spirit and say, what is God saying? You will hear a lot of things. God has a lot to say. And this guy has the privilege of listening from God. But the problem is conveying the information from him to him and him. Hallelujah. Right. Because the information that he receives, the communication he receives from God, is too complex for the body to understand. God does not speak with a voice and say, Emmanuel, go to church. <laughs> that's not our voice, right? I know that's what they showed us in Hollywood when we were growing up. Rise up, and God is speaking. No, that's not our voice. If you follow scripture nicely, the Bible says, in a very small voice, a voice is so small that only this guy can catch it. And when this guy catches it, he has to send it to this guy and this guy to the other guy. These three are important to work in unity and not against each other. The spirit alone cannot do anything on earth without the body. That's why for Jesus came to come and die for you and me, he needed a body. He couldn't just come out of heaven and say, I'm a, I'm a right to crucify you when we finish this. No. He had to be born of a woman. Imagine Mary had to change even the nappies of Jesus. Imagine Jesus, they are taking his diapers away, throwing them. It's, it's not a sin to imagine that it, it happened. Mary used to bath Jesus. Maybe who knows? If you tell it, uh -huh, don't you know that you are the savior of the world? For real. So Jesus understands everything you can ever see. If you ever say, Lord, I'm weak, I don't feel like I can do this, he understands because he's been a human before us. Hallelujah. I think we can clap for Jesus. The soul is a supervisor, and the body is the worker. Hallelujah. Praise so, anything that the company owner wants, let's say God is the company owner, he tells the manager, the manager has to tell the supervisor, and the supervisor will tell the workers what to do. I remember this guy is split in two. He listens to him, and he also listens to him. So sometimes, the information will be coming very right from the manager. But the soul will be like, ah, should I go with it? Hey, boy, what are we doing on earth? I think we have one question. Name the guy. That's the soul. And this guy doesn't have the power to say, so I punish you. What do I punish you? No. Because he needs the tool to work with him in cooperation. Hallelujah. So when we preach this word to you, we are not sending it to your body. Now you are also sending this word to your soul. We are trying to get that word inside your spirit because that is a new you. Brother, when you die, we won't find this in heaven. This body will never go to heaven. In fact, even for some of us who want to die, who will be there when Jesus Christ will come? How do you know? I believe. I'm left one cup of vaccination. Hallelujah. How many want to die? No one. So we'll all see Jesus the day he comes. How many want to be there? And some don't even know anything. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. 
But last chance, how many just really want to be there when Jesus Christ comes? Okay, thank you for raising up your hand. You can clap for yourself. The word of God says that for the people who will be there when He comes, their bodies will be changed into another body. This one will never enter heaven because its origin is from the earth. And everything it does, it wants to please the earth because that's where it came from. So the body has only one agenda. Everything is nothing else. But your soul is in between the two. Your soul can decide to either focus on the spiritual, listen to the manager, or to focus on the earthly things. The Bible says that when Jesus Christ comes, he'll give you a new body. The Bible says, the corruptible will take up an incorruptible. The time you're going to heaven, you'll be given a new body, not this one. A body that is fit to keep you in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 11 says that to some you have to be prophets, pastors, preachers, no, not preachers. Prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, followers, <coughs> apostles. Why did God give these people? Why do you have a pastor back at home, a reverend back at home? He said it's for the equipping and perfecting of the saints. So even this spirit of yours needs to be equipped and perfected before it can go to where Jesus is. That's why we come to church every day. We learn new things. We are taken to another level. Hallelujah. So, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So when you hear the word of God, the first entrance is it comes to this God, to his mind. And this guy will be like, boy, what am I touch? He's like, ah, I'll ask you to some question in the future. I'll like, oh, oh, I'll ask you to come. You come when I'm in there. And salvation, I mean, she's quite official. He's like, yeah, salvation, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. That's where the conviction takes place. That's where we preach the word of God and say, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come here. Not everybody in that place have given their lives to Jesus. But some will come and some will remain. Why? Because some people, the way that's only remain and maybe just say the brain part. And there you will do nothing. That's why scientists, philosophers, and what can read the Bible, no matter how much they read, they will never encounter the power of God. It will just fear in their brains. That's why they even have the liberty to oppose it. But if you let the word of God move from your brain, passes through your soul, through the aid of your mind. And it's conveyed to your spirit, it understands that material. That's where revelation comes from. Hallelujah. Amen. Just from a preaching, you can tell that uh, God has spoken to me. I've read the voice of God in that preaching. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you've allowed the word to move from just your brain, passes through your soul, then you see your spirit. But there's a danger again between these three, and this is the last thing. Remember, he is a product of the two, the flesh and the spirit. So he, if he wants, because the will is in, free will is in this, the soul. Whatever he decides, that's up to him. If he wants, he can disregard the manager. Yes, I is. And just begin having fun with the work. Supervisor and worker, but the man and the have an inspiration. And as a result, that's a hard worker. For six hours, actually, no club. Nah, nah, nah. Supervisor, then you better want to phone boy. You want to talk about phone boy. But I come on and I start to talk about our station and phone. I will come back to my job. She goes and she says, Who cares? Today, I tried to talk about the commercial support that he loves. But I'm not going to talk about these two can play like that. They can. They can totally disregard the spirit. And God is speaking to you every time. God is talking to you every time. But you will say, I never heard him because these two are not working with the spirit. Hallelujah. So when we say restoring souls, <coughs> restoring souls or restoration in general, all we are saying is, Getting this guy back in position 
to listening from the manager. And when the manager has spoken, he conveys the message here. And when the message is received here, you run up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all we are trying to do. Because God speaks to you each and every time, each and every moment. But can that information leave him and come here and go there? Because these are so important. Anything like uh, praying tongues and all that. The body doesn't understand anything. Neither does the mind doesn't understand anything. That's why for some people, it's a mockery to say, oh, you pay for the budget. But take a moment and ask the spirit to say, do you know what you are talking about? You will explain everything that you are saying. Because that conversation is not between the soul and God or the body and God. It's between the spirit himself and God. They know exactly what they are talking about. But unless that is broken down to the level that the mind can understand or the body can understand, it will be just making like very, very apparent. The Bible says that when Jesus Christ was baptized, a voice this is my son in whom I am not pleased. Did everybody hear that voice? No, no matter how loud God will speak, if it's not your spirit that is listening and passing the information to this guy, it'll be just noise. It's like when dogs are barking.
Because my spirit has benefited something. Your body will remain here. And if you die before Jesus Christ comes, we'll bury you. But we know we'll meet you somewhere. And we will not be meeting that body. We'll meet the spirit here. Hallelujah. So every time you feel a retaliation, you want to do the things of God, but your body is saying no. Please remind yourself one important thing. This guy is not interested in going to heaven and he will never go to heaven. So mama kara come can have a body enough for heaven all the time. You will miss God all the time. Your body is not even interested in going to heaven. It has no interest, zero percent commitment. It wants to be here forever. It's your spirit that wants to go there. And your soul also wants to go there. Deep down inside you, you know all I need is God. Deep down in the inside of you, you know. Lesson I need that for Kumushima. We're not talking about knowing God so that you can stand and begin to show how much you know. No, just knowing God for the sake of you knowing him personally. But we feel. Hallelujah. Just, just the two of them. <clears throat> Apostle Paul said that I may know the power of his resurrection. Moses said, show me your glory. When Isaiah saw God for the first time, Isaiah was a perfect man until if you really look at his life, you see, Isaiah was a perfect man. But the day that he saw God, he said, I'm a sinner. I'm too dirty. I stay among the sinners. And the Bible says, God took a call, gave it to an angel from the temple. Isaiah was given, that's in Isaiah chapter number 6, and the boy woke in it. I almost thought Isaiah was going to be But let's call him the boy in him, that's in the right. And the man, that's much better. Isaiah was a prophet. And the man started living. Before Isaiah chapter number 6, you don't hear Isaiah prophesying anything about Jesus. Oh, yeah. But the day that he saw God, his levels changed. The man began prophesying about the coming of Jesus. What will happen after he comes? He even prophesied about the rapture. It's there in the book of Isaiah chapter number 26. To an extent that he even said, and the people around you on earth that time, together with myself, will be taken away to a certain place for some time until the tribulation passes away. As a man who was born before, your, your lineage.